Yes, the weather is getting real nice out there and it is now time for the May 2015 Hot Wheels Green Light Haul. And you'll notice that I've done an abbreviation of the two major brands I am now collecting these days. Of course, I'm always collecting plenty of Hot Wheels, both new and classic, which we'll review in this video. But as you can see, there's also an extreme amount of awesome new green lights coming out. And we're going to have a look at each of those. And even a matchbox. I don't collect a whole lot of matchbox these days ever since they kind of went the uh, younger route with their castings. But we've got one to look at. And definitely some stuff worth checking out in my May 2015 haul. We're going to open up a whole bunch of these green lights. Including some Hot Pursuits. Uh, the Hitch and Toes. Brand new, just released. Look at that. Wow. Love that stuff. And we're also going to be opening up all of these uh, V-Dub clubs. The full six car set. We've got Volkswagen vans and cars and whatnot. And a quick look at some of the, my favorite Hot Wheel castings so far released this year. I've only got three here, so not to bore you. And uh, some cool classics. I don't know what happened to the rest of mine, but I've got the main ones here to look at. Including the full set of Porsche. And a very important little Porsche. We're going to start by looking at this 1976 released Super Chrome Redline Porsche 917. This was a very desirable car to get back in the day. And especially so now as it gets harder and harder to find. Here's my old one that I'm replacing. In pretty decent shape. It's got quite a few little nicks on it and the tampos are pretty bare. The chrome was pretty uh, chipped up. The wheel's not perfect. But look at this one here I picked up for $75. And that one space missing between the Porsche 917 and the Prowler is where my new 917 is going to rest. And while we're talking about Porsches, let's look at these brand new 2014 released. I think they've been released in 2015 because of the popularity. This was an 8 series Porsche, uh, called the Porsche series. And uh, you've got one of 8 cars here. This is number 1. So we're going to look at the back here and it looks just like any other Hot Wheel. Except you're going to have that Porsche series on the back. The list of the cars available. And that's what the card art looks like. Each car is going to look a little bit different depending on the car that you have. So you've got the Porsche Boxsters, the Porsche 959, uh, the Porsche 993, the Porsche 917K, the Porsche Boxster Spider, Porsche Carrera GT. Gotta love the card art on these things too. It's very, very fitting. And of course the Porsche 935, 1978. Next we're just gonna have a quick look at some of these final release cool classics. Rounding out all 30 cars from 2014. Almost didn't think these were gonna come through. I think everybody's probably seen these that's looking for these cars, so we're not gonna spend too much time on them. But the Subaru Brat, one of my favorites. Uh, you definitely want to keep an eye out for that. All metal. Not real riders, but that's okay. Another very desirable car, the Datsun 240Z. And, of course, there's the Datsun 510 available. And a couple other cars. What have we got? The uh, 010, or 010, the 10 Ford Shelby GT500 Super Snake, which you can see is listed up there, as well as the 1976 Chevy Chevette. I do have these cars somewhere, I've just misplaced them, but like I said, you've probably seen these cars before, so uh, if you haven't, check them out. I'm sure you'll find a good, cool classics video, maybe from Race Grooves or something like that, so I don't need to go into too much detail about those. Uh, I know there's been a top five video of uh, Hot Wheels going around. I don't think I can participate because I have just too many favorites, and I don't think I can narrow it to five, but... If I can narrow to, say, three for this year, I would say this one comes in. Number one, the Volkswagen Caddy. Awesome little pickup truck of a Volkswagen, maybe mid to late 1980s. Just think that's an absolutely wonderful car to be released 
this year when you know keeping prices still sub one dollar also the Tatsun 620 pickup truck another amazing release for this year this is of course a re-release from last year but still the paint job is absolutely amazing and I'm so happy to see it released again because they were extremely difficult to find the first year they were released in orange and red and thirdly for this year I am extremely excited to see this Lotus Esprit S1 extremely well detailed tampo super detailed license plate tail lights the SP5 wheels really look sharp on this car the side tampoing and detail and uh, the white base actually really sets it apart so I love this car black interior not sure how they can make this one any better with any future paint jobs or tampos but we shall see all these cars extremely awesome and so happy to see them thank you Hot Wheels for continuing to make awesome Hot Wheels for us adult collectors but anyways let's have a quick look at that matchbox truck and we're going to open it right up here it's a supreme hero ultramax wheel series looks like a ford it's got some nice card art on it very colorful shiny card art um a little bit of a blurb about that so you can pause if you want to read about that there's three other cars in the series not really a big fan of any of them i mean some individually if they were a dollar sure but these ones here are featured about two to three dollars i think decide if it's worth the two to three times as much that you might pay for this thing so the wheels themselves are very cool tampo they are uh, you know what they're actually a rubber tire forgive me look at that rubber tires on these things so there that's worth an extra dollar right there you just got rubber tires on a matchbox I don't think I've ever seen rubber tires on a matchbox since the 60s. So, you know, there you go. That's why we're making these videos. This is uh, as much. I've never seen this vehicle before, of course. I've just opened it on camera for you. And uh, we can now see why these are so cool. The kids are going to love these cars. They got that squeaky rubber sound, what I would call real riders. And uh, this vehicle is just uh, really cool. Green Light V-Dub Club Series 1, first release ever of this awesome new V-Dub series of vehicles. You're going to find vans, Volkswagen bugs, who knows what's in the future for this series. I have such high hopes for it and high expectations. I don't think Green Light's ever let me down, so I'm certainly not worried. I'm hoping to see some 80s rabbits, uh, you know, maybe some 90s golfs, some other Volkswagen, some Jettas perhaps, uh, some Passats, let's see them all. But for now we've got the Volkswagen Westphalia Campmobiles and we've got them in several years. Once again, you're going to see 1973, we've got 1977, 1968, and as for the Beatles, we've got a 1952 Type 1 split window, a 1949 Type 1 split window, and a 1938 Type 1 split window. What's really cool, again with all things green light, these numbers, these years of the vehicles are not arbitrary as you would find on many other castings and uh, brands of cars. There's actually subtle differences, very apparent in each of these vehicles when you look at them up close in detail. So without getting into too much excruciating detail because we do have four awesome series to look at in this video. The 1968, the 1973, and the 1978 Volkswagen Westphalia vans lined up side by side so you can see the difference. 1968 is the red one, 1973 is the orange one, and 1978 is the brown one. Already you can see there is a minor difference on the front of the vehicles between 1968 you can see that the front has the two grills above the Volkswagen emblem. And also, check out those mirrors, which is really cool to see on such a small 164 scale vehicle. You don't see that every day. Here on the 1973 version with the top, uh, the pop top camper, you can see it's got 
the reflector lights now situated above the headlights and on either side of the grill. So you do have some minor differences and uh, you'll also see on the back the tail light differences. The 1973 to the 1978 version not so much of a noticeable difference that I can see. The fronts look the same as do the backs but we do get the uh, pop top Westphalia camper version as well as the hard top. On the back you can see the uh, there's not much of a difference between the 78 and 73 version the Westphalia version with the uh, pop top camper this is a molded piece it's a separate plastic piece you cannot uh, depress it into the roof but that's just fine with me you would not achieve the detail in this model if it did so no complaints there from the 1968 to the 1973 version clearly a very large difference in the tail lights you can see the 70's boxier taillights rectangular in shape compared to the rounder uh, late 60's taillight versions not to mention hubcap differences window differences and bumper differences you can see the bumpers are all different on all these vehicles check out the detail we've got opening and closing uh, front bonnet as well as rear engine lid and of course they open and close perfectly the seams are perfect the wheels all roll beautifully and the detail is just second to none we've got trim around each window door handles and whatnot little headlights you're gonna find the same detail across the board detailed little front engine bay well it's not an engine bay because the engines in the back but whatever you want to call it there's a detailed little engine in the back shuts perfectly and of course the final one here the 1952 same thing you're gonna see uh, similarities of course in both cars let's look at a spread of 14 years here keep in mind Volkswagen's didn't really change much year to year so for the split window model you see some wheel changes uh, probably would have seen a bumper change I'm not really sure if that's representative we'll have to double check my Volkswagen book but either way love these models at four to five dollars a car all metal construction look at that metal base metal body opening multiple parts you can't go wrong hitch and tow series three one of the best green light series vehicles to come out to date I have to say is this hitch and tow the packaging has changed slightly between the former hitch and toes which features the plastic uh, tongue back here on the back of the plastic and the whole blister off the front obviously redesigned to hang better on the pegs probably because they're selling a whole lot more of these than they ever expected to in the first place definitely one of the things I'm, I would anticipate as launching green lights so to speak career in 164 scale die cast is these hitch and toes because everyone loves these everyone wants to get their hands on them the trailers are amazing everything's all metal functional tow hitches functional jack stands for these vehicles let's open them up but first we'll take a quick overview look we've got the 66 Dodge D100 and Airstream now in yellow or a mustard yellow metallic these were formerly released in the silver aluminum look metallic. We've also got a highly anticipated 2014 Dodge Ram with the SRT Tampo package. Extremely detailed trailer. Look at the tampos on this trailer. Opening door. That's just a tampo on the, uh, the plastic itself here. So obviously a lot of Dodge fans out there are going to want that one right there. That's just going to be super popular. One of my favorites here, of course, I love my old stuff, is this 1977 Chevrolet G20 work van. Flatbed trailer, extremely detailed. So we're going to crack open all these vehicles and have a closer look at them because I've decided from now on it's worth cracking them. I'm not going to save them for the next generation. I'm going to enjoy them right now. So there you go. Here we go. It's 2014 Ford Interceptor Utility Small Cargo Trailer. 
Also highly anticipated. The details and graphics on this car are awesome. Anyone that's into any sort of police vehicle is going to love this casting and trailer. So without further ado, let's open up the full set of four and have a closer look at them. Now aside from the differences that I mentioned about the packaging, and let's just do a side-by-side -side comparison for the old packaging, you can see quite a difference in the presentation for these vehicles. The back's not so much different, but the spacing of the plastic is completely different and the blister pack. One complaint that many of us had, including myself, as far as collectors go, was that on these first series one and two, the hitch was often broken on these vehicles as well as the jack stand was often missing or also broken on these trailers. Greenlight obviously paid close attention to us and has now fixed that problem as far as I can see by uh, staggering the vehicles in the packaging so that the hitch can't possibly get contacted by the trailer during shipping. Thereby, I have not seen any broken hitches so far. Also, the receiver jack is now in its own little taped special enclosed bubble in, in the packaging. So don't go and throw it away wondering where your jack stand went. It's right there in the top left corner, as is in all of these, uh, these sets now. So, as you can see, it's there as well. And I've already opened the pickup truck with the Airstream, but there it is again. So... A few small changes that have probably improved the quality control of these vehicles. And uh, thank you Greenlight for, for paying attention to the forums and for listening to us collectors. And I'm sure that we all definitely greatly appreciate that. And here we have all four Greenlight Hitch and Toes freshly out of their package. If you've ever collected old Star Wars figures from the mid 90s or so or even recently, and opened them up and smelled that fresh new plastic smell that's extremely strong and almost addictive in nature. You will find that with these new green light hitch and toes. You gotta love that new plastic smell. It's like a brand new vehicle. Here we have a beautiful rendition of a 1966 Dodge pickup truck. Check out the detail on that hood. Opening hood with engine bay. And the uh, headlights and signal lights and grill, as well as the tampo, is just absolutely amazing. The bed liner, the details on this trailer, of course, also wonderful. And even on the back side, let's see if we can spin this thing around. Propane tanks in the front. The door on the far side, as well as a little, my, something or other. Hmm. Cool. Anyways, the detail, extraordinary on these vehicles. And as you can see, that Dodge with its hood closed. Quite a nice truck indeed. Very heavy. Of course, all these are all metal. And uh, the hitches on the back, numbered, rubber tires. Next we're looking at this Chevy G20 van with flatbed trailer. Beautiful van. Beautiful trailer. You can see it's got the little ramps there you can fold up as needed. Once your cars are done, I'm sure they'll fold up farther than that. I just... Hard to do it one hand. The van itself, all metal of course. And just an awesome metallic gray. Details in the bottom. Rubber tires. No opening parts on this one, but the details is just awesome. And as you can see, it, it will even fit on its own trailer. So this is a sizable trailer. Suitable for just about any vehicle and towable by your G20 worker van. Whoa. 
Next, we're going to have a look at this 2014 Dodge Ram. They've released this truck numerous times in the last year or two. But this is by far one of the coolest tampos and wheel decorations I've seen. And look at the trailer that it comes with. Absolutely insane. Just a beautiful trailer. Hollow inside. You could fit almost the whole Dodge Ram itself right into the back of this trailer if you wanted to. If it weren't for those mirrors, you turn around, you probably could fit it right in there. Look at that. You can get just about most vehicles into this trailer, because this Dodge Ram is enormous. And the trailer folds up. It's extremely detailed, lightweight, plastic trailer with a metal chassis. And fully towable by this little Dodge, well, little 164 scale Dodge Ram. Enjoy your new SRT Dodge set. And as I had mentioned before, the 5.0 is never far behind when Greenlight has their way about it. Here we've got an awesome Ford Edge or something or other, or some sort of Interceptor SUV. I keep getting these ones mixed up. Comes with a cool little trailer. Let's find out. Oh, it's a Ford Interceptor, yes. Very generic. Obviously, it's a... Uh, some sort of vehicle, an explorer or something like that. But anyways, I should know this. I don't. Forgive me. I know my older cars a little better than my newer. And I keep mixing this one up. But look at the tampos on that. The light bar. It's just awesome. It's just like the ones you see on the highway. And you're going to want to add this one to your collection for sure. Especially with this little trailer. We've got some new heavy-duty trucks now in the series. The International Stars make their appearance once again for the Black Bandit series collection. Awesome vehicle with the Black Bandit tampos now on the door. And the chromed out black rims, all black paint job, chromed out black gas tanks. Pretty cool. Or not gas tanks, work boxes. That's the flatbed edition and of course We've got it as well in the tow truck. Black bandit on the door once again. I only bought one of these. I'm not sure if I can open them up just yet. Probably will. There's really nothing exceptional about them. They don't seem to be overly pricey. These ones here are a hobby exclusive. Only available online. So if you want them, you have to look out for the Verizon IndyCar series. This is the flatbed Greenlight International. And in my quest to maintain my current collection of every green light Durastar available, as OCD as that might be, I have had to buy every single one, including these Verizon uh, special vehicles, which I was not even aware of until I just kind of happened across them. So luckily the seller that I was looking at also had the Black Bandits and I was able to complete the collection. Let me know if you see any other new ones. I'd be uh, happy to hear about them. And of course, Greenlight Series 15 is now out. Uh, Hot Pursuit Series 15, I should say. Look at this one. New York Police Department. Central Park, 1967 Ford Bronco. We have to open one of these up. Look at this thing. It's amazing. The back of these packages, of course, features a map. It shows, you know, where this vehicle was uh, utilized. And uh, even though it's sad to say that I've only got one of this series, I simply cannot afford to buy two of everything. So we are going to open them up. As much as I don't like opening Hot Pursuit series cars because of the awesome details on them, uh, I think we're going to have to open these up. Or should we not open them up? I don't really know. This film is getting long. Maybe we'll skip a few and we'll just open half of them up. How's that sound? We'll open up the ones I bought duplicates of. And the ones I bought duplicates of were the Ford Bronco, uh, that 1975 Dodge Monaco you just looked at. I wish I'd got one of this car. This is amazing. And, of course, we've got the new 2014 Dodge Ram 1500 in police with the push bar again. Steely wheels. Do not have a duplicate of that. We've really only got duplicates of the two, so... Maybe just to expedite this video for now, until a future video, we will uh, have a look at them. There's another one of those Ford Interceptor Utilities. We saw that earlier with the Hitch and Tow series. 
And of course, one of my favorites, the Jeep Wrangler. Still waiting for Greenlight to come out with a four-door version in 164 scale. I do need that, being a four-door version owner. So our final peek, of course, is at these Hot Pursuit cars. I've opened two of them, my two favorites. A 1975 Dodge Monaco showing you an awesomely detailed engine. This car featured in a deep metallic blue. Solid closing hood. And extremely detailed tampos on the rear highway patrol. Return signal lights and license plates. So you gotta love the details on these cars. It's just amazing. Now, of course, the 1967 Ford Bronco. Check out the roof on this thing. Can we zoom in on that? Look at that. Spotlights in all three directions. Amazing wheels. A little rotator light. An opening engine bay with the air cleaner. All metal design. Look at the wheel hubs. It's even got the five bolt pattern. Uh, removable wheels. Just amazing. One of my favorites for sure. And they roll real good too. Well. This is the junkyard, so, I mean, there's a bit of mud. Hope you enjoyed the video, and stay tuned for plenty more.